Outside of inverse or leveraged indices, one could argue there are a few options to take a diametrically opposed view of the market within the construct of an index. While there are multiple strategies that seek to outperform float market capitalization through a smart beta approach, they are not seeking to move against prevailing market sentiments. Hello, I'm Michael Mel, Director of Custom Indices at S&P DJI. Joining me today to delve into a custom reverse cap weighted approach to the S&P 500 is Kevin Quigg, Chief Strategist at Exponential ETFs. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you for having me, Mike. Great. So I'd like to start off by asking you to explain exactly how reverse cap weighting works. What is it? Sure. Simply put, it's the reverse of market cap weighting. So we start with the S&P 500 constituent companies, and while cap weighting traditionally puts the most highly capitalized companies at the top, the most low capitalized companies at the bottom, we do the reverse of that. So we utilize the same universe, the same constituent companies, but rather than utilizing their market cap, we use one over their market cap, and the end result is a fairly diversified universe of companies with the smallest S&P 500 constituent having the largest uh, holding and the largest S&P 500 constituent, which is Apple, as you know, being the smallest holding within, within the index. Great. So it's essentially the inverse from a weighting perspective. It is the inverse from a weighting perspective. That's right. Great. Kevin, do you see the reverse cap weighted U.S. large cap index as a contrarian strategy? Is this something a Warren Buffett would like? I think he would. There are certainly some, some components of contrarianism. I think there's, there's mean reversion uh, at play. We certainly think that there's the ability to, to um, you know, sort of take some of those fallen angels of the S&P 500, for lack of a better term, and, and, and put a higher weighting towards them. But we also think it's a means through which to gather diversification. Uh, it's a means through which to, to control your overall cap exposure, keeping in mind that your average market cap drops from $160 billion down to $16 billion. And it really is a, is a uh, differentiated way of looking at the universe. So for market participants, in terms of a sort of portfolio strategy, would you look at this as additive to large cap exposure? We think in a lot of cases it is. So if you think about the cap spectrum as defined by S&P, the small cap universe runs from about zero to $5 billion. The mid cap universe is five to $10 billion. The large cap universe is $10 billion and above. And at this point, Apple's market capitalization is bordering on a trillion dollars. It's about $950 billion. The large cap universe is a tremendous swath of capitalization to be covered in an index. And again, utilizing the cap weighted methodology, you tend to have some bias towards the high end in those mega cap companies. Yeah. We do think that this provides people the opportunity to really take an interest in the bottom half of the S&P 500, provide some diversification, and really counter some of the mega cap biases that are, that are inherent in, in cap weighting. Great. So why use the S&P 500 for reverse cap weighting? In other words, what is it about that universe in particular that uh, makes sense for, for you? Sure. I think there's two very clear reasons to use the S&P 500. Number one, the S&P 500 for U.S. large cap ownership is the global mandate. Every institution, every institution, every financial advisor, every newscast at the night defines the U.S. large cap universe as the S&P 500. There's an inherent understanding of that methodology. There's an inherent trust, frankly, because of the length of time it's been in the marketplace. And as someone that was looking to, to add to the fabric of the, the large cap investment marketplace, that was the most common place, place to start, right? Okay. Secondly, if you think about the opportunity for the reverse cap methodology and where we think it addresses gaps in existing, you know, sort of thought, mm. again, the small cap universe is relatively limited. The mid cap universe is relatively limited because there are bars on both the top and bottom end of those spectrums. Okay. In the large cap market, there is no limit to the top end because of that having a, a, a tool in the large cap universe that allows you to play size, which is a traditional factor, was something that we felt was needed in the marketplace. Great. So interestingly, I guess from an academic perspective and or otherwise, do you see potential applications of this strategy for other market segments, you know, whether it's going to be bonds, small caps, mid caps? I know we kind of touched a little bit on this, but is this really unique to large cap equity or is the application potentially larger? Well, academically and theoretically, it's certainly not uh, contained a large cap. Fama French, as you know, is sort of based on that small minus big premise. With that being said, academically, you can think of lots of things that are really cool. Unfortunately, when you translate them into an investable product, that's where you run into some problems. In the small cap universe, using the reverse methodology, the bottom end of that, mm -hmm. micro cap companies would be right. your largest constituents. Operationally, that's going to be very difficult to hold, but theoretically, the, the, the theory certainly holds. Okay. Uh, the mid cap arena is going to give you some of the same challenges. The large cap space, because of the overall, again, just, just 
swath of the cap range that it covers in conjunction with the efficiency with which those companies, particularly S&P companies, can be accessed, right. really makes it a unique space in the market to sort of implement such a, such a forward-looking strategy. And what about your thoughts on bonds? In the bond space, again, theoretically, I think perhaps it would work, but there's no New York bond exchange like the New York Stock Exchange. So again, right. that translation from theory to practice becomes challenged in the real world. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for your thoughts, Kevin. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. To learn more about custom indexing, visit us at www.spdji.com forward slash custom indices.